Hello, 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 and welcome back to another episode of The Theological Arsonist. I am your host, Jonah Saller. Thank you so much for joining me today. It is good to be back. It is good to talk with you all. And today I want to talk about where I've been. I've been gone for like a month. I said I was going to be gone, I think, for a week, and I ended up being gone for like three and a half, four weeks. Um, I needed time to unplug. I needed time to... Um, really take a step back from everything and reanalyze my, my priorities in life, what I wanted to do with the things that I have, the resources that I have, the, the ministry that I have that God has blessed me with. And in doing so, I, I came across a, a bunch of different things. In today's episode, to just kind of give you a little bit of a preface, today's episode is going to be talking about minimalism and kind of monasticism in a way so those those two things i'm going to kind of tie them together um but as i talk about this i i want to start by just saying that one of the things that has always attracted me about old christianity like old ancient desert christian fathers and and the monastics and the people who lived way back in the day and just hung out in the desert as hermits the thing that really attracts me to that is the simplicity of their living. So simple. They would sit, they would meditate on the Word of God, they would pray, they would fast, and they would dedicate themselves to God, really, and, and to, and to um, pushing away all the things in life that would distract. You can call them the first minimalists. Minimalism before it was cool. Because we live in a culture now where minimalism is is kind of almost a trendy fashion statement, right? If you if you're a minimalist, you're kind of a, a seen as like a, a cool icon in society. And this is this is what um, the secular world does. I think it was Doug Wilson who said, "Us Christians, we start things, and then the secular the secularists they're like parasites. They 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 just come and they feed off of the host and claim all our ideas as their own, and that's that's really the truth." And so minimalism didn't originate recently. It's been around since the very, very early days. Um, and, and prior to, to early Christianity, you can find this all throughout um, Eastern religion and stuff as well. But, but in the early Christian faith, you see a lot of just stillness, being comfortable with less, being comfortable with nothing even. And specifically in the Christian teachings, you see just a, a rest and a reveling in the presence of God as all-sustaining, all, all you could ever need, all you could ever want. And there's a deep, deep attraction in me to that kind of a lifestyle because we live in a culture that is just inundating us, inundating us nonstop with media, with with flashy things, all you need this, you need that, you got to look at this, no, look at that now. And we have so much of this instant gratification at the tip of our fingertips. You can go on social media and Instagram unconsciously and be scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And if you were to just pause and look at one picture and actually read the caption under it, oh, that would take too long. So you just kind of want to glance at it, maybe like it, and then keep going. But who has time to read a long caption? Like, that is how we operate. We're instant, instant, instant. And so we don't want to take time to do anything. We're constantly distracted. We're constantly on the move. We cannot sit and sit still for a long period of time. I mean, gosh, even when I was working on, on schoolwork, I would get five minutes into a paper and I'd be on my phone, and then I put my phone down and work a little, and then on my phone, and then got to get up, and maybe I get a drink, or it's absolutely insane. It's this fast pace, and it is just it was giving me a headache, and I felt like I couldn't escape it, and so I needed to take a step back. I thought a week was going to be enough. I needed much longer, so that's why I've taken almost four weeks completely pulled away from 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 social media, from YouTube, um, from all those things. I really needed it. And what I recognized is when you take a step back from these things, you're able to actually be happy. (laughs) 
And I, I, I don't want to say that those who are using technology constantly are not happy, but there is a sort of discontentedness that is perpetuated through excessive use of the internet that disappears when you're unplugged. It, it, it disappears when you're unplugged. And so this episode, I really want to talk about what I did these last four weeks to simplify my life and the things that are on my mind in terms of going forward. Now, one of the things that I did first and foremost, and I did this a little while ago, but I, I removed social media from my phone, removed it from my phone, didn't want Instagram, didn't want Facebook, didn't want Twitter on there. So I got rid of those. More recently deleted YouTube. That was another step. I decided I don't want YouTube on my phone either. And what I ended up doing is I created, I turned my iPhone into a dumb phone. And, and I'll, I'll show you. So it's just a normal iPhone, you can see. And what I did to my iPhone is I, I minimalized it. So I, I have grayscale on. Let's see if that focuses. Oh. And those who are listening, I'm, I'm just trying to show the phone to the camera. But I'll explain it in words, too, for those who are just listening to the audio. But I, I, I basically grayscaled it. That way there's less color, less things to draw me in. And then I took my home page and I brought it. I, I, I basically, I simplified it. I took everything that I did not need off of my phone and I put limits on everything that I left on my phone that might serve as a distraction. So for example, the internet on my phone, Safari, the browser, two minutes is my maximum time that I can spend on it now before it tells me that is enough. But here's my home screen. At the top of the home screen, I have um, weather, a calendar, I have, and then the four applications that I have up here, I have photos, camera, I have my logos, Bible software, and I have Google Maps. And then at the very bottom, I just have texting and calling. And that is it. That's my home screen. And that is what I have access to on my phone. It's the only thing now. Now, if I work really hard, I can have access to a few other things. But even those, I've made it very difficult to try to have access. So I only use my phone now to take pictures, to read scripture, to go on maps if I'm going somewhere, to call, to text, and to keep calendar and know the weather for the day. That's it. And I will tell you that this has been the most freeing experience of my life because I truly have been addicted. I made a video called I'm Addicted to Technology, and I truly was addicted. And I'm still fighting the temptation and tendency to want to just be on social media and be on the internet. But... Some of the things that happened when I unplugged, I started to be aware of how much I was missing out on. When I would go and sit on the porch in the morning, I would go on my phone, scroll on social media. Now I sit on the porch, I'll either read or I'll just sit. I'll sit in the stillness. I'll close my eyes and I'll listen to the birds as I can hear them in the trees. I'll listen to the wind gently rustling. And I can hear the voice of God in that silence. Be still and know that I am God, the psalmist writes. I've found that that has been just a remarkable thing. Now, what about my home life? Well, I, I found out that I have a wife. <laughs> I found out I have a wife. And in the evening, when I'm able to set my phone aside, because it's not distracting to me anymore, I'm able to just sit and look at her. Now, of course, we have conversations as well. We're not, we don't isolate from one another in speech. We have conversations, but I find that it's beautiful and freeing to recognize that silence is okay. And not only is silence okay, silence can be a very wonderful thing. I'm not uncomfortable anymore. Whenever there was a lull in the conversation with my wife, I would always whip my phone out because you got to have something to do, right? I mean, that's the way we're trained to think. But now there's a lull in the conversation. I'll just sit and I'll look at her. 
I'll take in the beauty that God has provided me in her. Her beautiful hair, her eyes, the expressions she makes when she laughs and she smiles, the intricacies and delicacies that make her her. Things that I was missing out on when I would pull my phone out when there was a lull in the conversation. My wife likes to knit. And I'll tell you, I have found it to be incredibly enjoyable to just sit and watch her knit. To see her use a gift that God has given her. And to just watch. To just revel in that. We're so uncomfortable with things like that. With just sitting. With just being still. With being silent. And I think part of it is because we're afraid to be alone with ourselves. And that's been the hardest part. Is when my wife is gone... And I'm by myself, because I do most of my work here at home. And when I'm by myself, it is, oh, I get so antsy. I just want to find something to do. I want to get on social media. I want to distract my mind. But in the solitude and silence, I'm able to confront things in myself that I'm able to obstruct and obscure when I'm distracting myself constantly. I've had conversations with myself. I've had questions. Why are you this way? (laughs) And I've answered those things. I've had conversations with Christ about them. And I've been more comfortable just being able to be still and to let my brain think about things. And all of this may sound super simplistic and not be super interesting to you. but But I really hope it is because I really think that we need to challenge ourselves... To be comfortable in the stillness of life. We don't constantly need to be doing something or distracting or stimulating our brains. We can literally just sit on a couch or sit outside or go for a walk and just be still. And so to minimalizing my phone, turning, turning this phone into a dumb phone, so to speak has been the best thing that I have done in my life for as as long back, maybe since my wedding. I'll, I'll, I'll say my wedding. Since my wedding. My wedding was the best thing, and then this has been the second best thing. And the reason is that it's freed my mind to be able to actually enjoy life. I don't feel discontent anymore. I don't feel like I'm constantly needing to distract myself anymore. I actually feel very healthy. I'm not constantly depressed anymore either because when you're on social media all the time, you're seeing a lot of information, information that God never intended you to see. I mean, think about it. Prior to social media, prior to media in general, prior to television, if you wanted to know about what was going on in the world, you would have to go find a newspaper, pay some money, get it, find time to sit down and actually read it. Now, you have everything going on in the world in your pocket 24-7, constantly updating, constantly changing. If something happened in the world and you read the newspaper and, and something happened that day, the newspaper wouldn't refresh for you. You'd have to wait for maybe next week's newspaper or the next day's paper. Everything is instant and our minds cannot take all that in or never meant to take all that in. We weren't meant to know and be burdened by everything going on in the world all at the same time. And this has left people in a state of constant anxiety and depression. People constantly complaining about the politicians of the world and what they're doing and how they're wrecking everything. People constantly talking about how happy they are that the politics are finally on their side and they just can't wait for all these stupid people to get with it. There's this this discontentment about the way we live, the, the, the state of our country, the state of the world. And guess what? I don't care about those things anymore because I am not focused or concerned with them because they're not constantly coming at me anymore. Now, should we be aware of what's going on in the world? Yeah, perhaps we should. But to a certain extent, I'm very happy just knowing on what's going on in my own context with the people that are immediately in my life, my church, my family, my friends, my wife, those things, those are my primary priority. And if I'm constantly worrying about what's going on across the ocean, 
then how am I actually taking steps to investing in the relationships and people that are that are right now here and now in my life? I'm not really. And so I think we need to be very, very conscious about the distraction of the cell phone and what it does. And so now I access social media only exclusively on my computer. And even there, I'm trying to set limits. And one of the things that I'm thinking about very, very heavily and considering, and I, I would actually love your input. So if you're listening to this, uh, e send me an email. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can leave a comment below. But I'm personally very close to just leaving social media altogether. Speaking of like Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I'd stay on YouTube, but I would do YouTube and run a website. And those would be my two things. Videos, website, podcast, but not be posting on social media. Because to a certain extent, I feel like by posting, I am feeding into the addiction. I'm feeding into it. Now, sure, I might post a encouraging thing every now and again, something that, that's really meaningful to somebody. They read it, they take, they take encouragement from it. But the question is, would they have been more encouraged if they would have just not been on social media in the first place? I can't definitively answer that. That's why I'm asking for an outside perspective. The, the me, the, 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 the inner me says, Jonah, you feel so good having taken a step back, leave completely. But I, I don't want to also make an impulsive decision that would not be a good decision. So that area I'm still working through. But I, do, I, I am setting limits even with my time on the computer. I want, I want that to be a, a secondary thing as well. I want it to serve my purposes, what I need to use it for, but not have it where it's starting to control me, where I can't put it down. And so these are things that I'm taking, that I've been taking very, very seriously. And... In a lot of ways, these these steps I've taken have been building um, virtue in in me. I've been I've been building a a sense of contentment in Christ, a sense of contentment with my context right now, a sense of contentment with the things that I have, a sense of contentment with the world and the way things are. All of these things have helped me to to focus more, to love more, to be present more. And there has not been a single downside to it. And I think that's that's the thing I really want to emphasize is I think when people consider giving up social media or getting rid of it off of their phone, they feel as though they have to start weighing the good and the bad. Okay, here's the pros to getting off social media and here's the cons to getting off social media on my phone. And I would just say there's there's no there's no cons. There really are no cons. I mean, really genuinely, take, take a step with me. Think about your time on social media right now. Think about what you do on there and, and ask yourself, what would be the con to not doing this? Here's the con. You're no longer able to satisfy and get that little dopamine rush from stimulating your brain by looking at things constantly. I mean that that's the only con I can think of and that's not a con if you if you if you caught that it's not a con but I think I think the cons that we that we um that we create in our minds they're not they're not really they're not really serious cons they're they're more excuses for us to remain because we like to be addicted I mean, social media, it's designed to draw you in. It's designed to suck up your time. And I can guarantee you that many of you watching right now, you're on there a whole lot. <laughs> and and that's exactly precisely why you don't want to get off because you don't know what you'd do with yourself if you got off. You don't know what you would... You don't know. You, and, it, and that's a scary thing to think about, not knowing what to do, having time on your hands that you don't know what to do with. But I, but I would I would argue that that thinking even even that thinking is negative because of the fact that if you're off of social media and you're like well what am I going to do with my time I guarantee you there are things that you should be doing that social media is taking away from you you should be finishing that assignment you should be reading that book you should be having that conversation. And social media is impeding your ability to do that, to be productive, to live in that reality. 
And I think that social media is going to continue to infiltrate and influence and to, and r- bring a tighter and tighter, tighter grip on people. The more that we perpetuate being on social media as okay. Like, I truly believe that, that there is damage to us acting as though it's okay. Now, moderation, again, I'm not saying you should just up and leave and, and ditch it completely. I'm, I haven't done that. I'm still active on social media. But I, ha- I don't have it on this little device anymore. And this is a very, very distracting little device. And so I think that everybody, everybody, with no, no, um, no qualification, everybody would be better if they got rid of social media off of their phones and used it only through their computer. That's, that's my personal opinion. And I, I want to address one more thing, and it's a very important and serious subject to address. One of the dangers of social media, and one of the dangers of having a cell phone in general, and that's the issue of pornography. Now, I know that a lot of people probably who are starting to not pay attention, they heard that word, now, now you're tuned in very closely. And, and I'm going to make a very aggressive assertion. A very aggressive assertion. My assertion is, if you are on social media and you do not have an accountability software installed on your phone, you are watching and looking at pornographic material. That's my assertion. If you have a phone do not have accountability software, and have social media, you are looking at pornographic material. I don't think there's a way around that. And I think every single person watching this, especially men, every single guy watching this, feels that, that sense of guilt start to rise up because they know what I'm saying is true. Whether you're listening, whether you're watching, you know what I'm saying is true. And so here's the real question. Would you be comfortable dropping off your son or your daughter, your wife, anybody that you care deeply about, would you be comfortable dropping them off in the parking lot of a porn store, one of those seedy little places at the side of the road? Would you be comfortable dropping them off in the parking lot and saying, hey, inside there, are all the lusts that you could desire, but just don't just don't go in. I'll be back to pick you up later. Just 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 don't go in. Nobody will be watching you. Just just don't go in. Now we would all go, well, that's ridiculous. Why would you drop somebody off in the parking lot of a porn store, leave them there, and expect their willpower to not resist that kind of temptation? It's a very good question. So why do you do the same thing to yourself by putting a device in your pocket? that has access to every single piece of pornographic material known to man. And you can do it in a couple clicks. This is, this is a serious issue, and nobody's talking about it as much as they should. But we are, we are rotting our brains away and rotting away our testimony for Christ when we use this device for lust. And it's addictive, too. I know because I struggled with it at one point. I did. And I needed to take it seriously because I wanted to go into ministry. I needed to face my demons head on. I was planning on getting married. This was at the time I was dating my wife. And I knew I needed to address this head on. I now, not only do do I have a dumb phone, but I, I I wanted to bring this up later, not at the moment that I was telling you about the dumb phone, but not only is this a dumb phone, it's also installed with an accountability app. An accountability software that sends an email to my accountability partner if I were to look at anything inappropriate. It's not just for my sake, it's for my wife, it's for my marriage, it's for my ministry, it's for everything. And so if you, man or woman of God, do not have something to protect your eyes, and if you do not have something to protect you, you are literally carrying around a porn store in your pocket with no eyes on you. We would not have porn piled up in our closet, buried under a bunch of other stuff. We would not have naked people hiding somewhere in our home, 
So why do we have a device that has all of that on it with zero restrictions and we think that that's okay? We are opening the gate. We're letting the devil come in. We're saying, this is fine. Come on in. I'm going to do my best to resist you. I'm going to do my best to resist you. And guess what? We're tempting him, We're tempting the devil by saying, oh, I've got the willpower to do it. I've got the ability to do it. Brothers and sisters, we need help. We have weak flesh. We do. It's okay to admit that. It's good to admit that. We need to admit that. Because when we admit that we have weak flesh that fails very, very easily and is very prone and susceptible to sin, that's when we're going to actually take action to put up blockades to protect us. Don't rely on your will. Don't rely on your ability to resist as though you're some sort of hoity-toity person. Again, I will reassert, if you are watching this, specifically if you're a male, if you're watching this, you have a phone, you do not have accountability software, and you have social media, you are watching and using pornography. Now, I'm sure that there's at least one or two people that's going, I, I, I really, truly don't, Jonah. I'm, I'm, I'm being dead serious. I don't. And very good for you, but you are a minority. <laughs> you are a very, very small minority. I know my flesh is weak. I can get on this camera and I can talk all I want about how much I love God, how much I love my wife. And yet if I did not have accountability software, if I did not have protection set up, I know that my flesh can fail. I wouldn't put it past myself. And so we need to be proactive. There's no such thing as passivity when it comes to fighting lust. There's no such thing as passivity. We need to be vigilant. We need to be aggressive fighters and warriors against this and we need to take steps to secure and barricade from this destructive destructive enemy that will ruin us absolutely ruin us and leave us dead spit us out doesn't care about us rewires the very pathways of our brain to make us think about and and say and do things that we just would never otherwise think or entertain in our own minds and so really, these little things that we carry around, they're, they're, they're evil. They're evil little devices. Tools of the devil. Tools of Satan. But we can use them wisely. We can. Technology is not the enemy. Sin in the flesh is the enemy. And so we need to take that very, very seriously, but we also need not just throw away technology and say, well, it's hopeless. I mean, you could do that. I sometimes want to do that, but the, that, that's not necessarily always the answer. That's not what you have to do. But what I would encourage everybody to do is remove social media from, from your phone. Get rid of it off of your phone. You don't need it there. It's just a time sucker, a distraction. Get rid of social media from your phone. Secondly, install accountability software. Install accountability software. I, I use Ever Accountable. It's a wonderful, wonderful system. It's like 80-something a year, which isn't bad, and you can have it on multiple devices. I've got it on my computer and my phone. Wonderful, wonderful software. So install an accountability software. Find an accountability partner. Keep yourself accountable, even without social media on your phone. Get rid of it. Get rid of Safari. Get rid of your browsers. But even still, have it on your phone. Don't leave any loopholes. Nothing. And then thirdly, if you do use technology, moderate it. Use it at times and for specific purposes and, and, and set yourself to do that. Ask for accountability in that area as well. I, I've told my wife, honey, I would like to be off of my phone by this time every day. If you see me on my phone, tell me. For the most part, we do pretty good about keeping each other accountable in that area. Honey, I'd like to put my computer away at this time of the day and pick up a book instead. Tell me so that I can stay accountable. Like We, we, we need that accountability. As the body of Christ, we're not just supposed to come around each other and build each other up in worship and in service. In, in, in very traditional type senses. One of the ways we can do that is by keeping each other accountable in terms of our technology uses, usage or keeping each other accountable in terms of our, our lust and our sinful desires, making sure that somebody is there to keep us accountable with that. 
These are all very, very important things. And, and it's, it's all the rage today to be a minimalist. But the Christians were doing it first. The Christians were the ones who were saying no to the things of the world and abandoning it all for the sake and pursuit of Jesus Christ. And my favorite, favorite, favorite theologian and philosopher, Thomas Aquinas, he talks about the good. And I made a video about this a while ago. But Thomas Aquinas' understanding of good is that it ultimately is summed up in God, for God is good. In his divine simplicity, goodness is who he is. God is good. And since God is the ultimate good, everything else is it just pales in comparison. And so the ultimate end of man as his image bearer is to partake in his goodness, to partake in the divine nature, which is good. And so therefore, grace enables us to take more, take hold of goodness, to find more and more and more of it. And when we start to get distracted by these or our computers we start to sink deeper and deeper into a dependency on something else that promises good. And sometimes that, that can be a good thing that turns into a bad thing. I think it's good that I'm making theology content on technology. But if that turns into an addiction to technology and the temptation to lust, that leads into a promise of satisfaction and goodness that will never actually follow through and in fact brings us into bondage. So Aquinas talks about how in order for us to take hold of the good, we must pursue the good. We must pursue God in all areas, in all things. And we can't do that apart from God. So daily we should be praying, Lord, if there's anything that is seeking to fill the void in me that only you can, that is seeking to make me happy in a way that only you can, that is seeking to take my attentions and my desires and my love away from you, Lord, thwart that, remove that from my life, that I might be, hold, behold you, God, love you, serve you. And I felt that over these, these four weeks away from technology, away from media, that I was able to behold God, that I was able to take hold of my union with Christ in a new way, that I was able to truly Pray, Lord, root out anything that might be distracting me from loving you. And he did. He said, Jonah, you love your phone more than you love me. You're right. You're right, God. That's hard to admit, but you're right. Now, I can say you're right and then just keep living, or I could do something. So I, I decided to do something about it. And so you watching this, you have a choice to make right now. If you're listening to this, too. You have a choice to make. You can either go, wow, that was a that was a good that was a good little motivational talk from Jonah. Thanks, Jonah. <laughs> or you can actually follow through and do something. I guarantee you at least one of the things I said resonated with you. Whether that was a struggle with pornography, whether that was an addiction to technology and social media, something I said resonated with you because you wouldn't be on social media watching. If something, if you weren't, if you weren't at all addicted or, or, or intrigued by technology. So the question is, are you going to do something about it? I did, and it has been the most freeing thing in the world. And not just for my like personal mental health, but for my relationship with God. It truly nourished it and brought it deeper and continues to do so. And so my question for you, are you going to do the same thing? I would encourage you to. With that, I'll wrap up this podcast, and I, I just want to end by saying this. If we are to find our, our all in Jesus Christ, then we must root out anything that tries to be our all besides Christ. And for me, technology was very close to doing that, and so it needed to go. What is it for you? Even if it's not technology, the principles still apply. What, it is, what is it for you? If Christ is to be all in our life, if anything in our life tempts us to be all instead of Christ, we need to root it out. That might not mean getting rid of it completely. It just might be putting boundaries on it. But whatever it is, it needs to be addressed. 
And too many people are comfortable with an addiction to technology, not talking about it, not talking about pornography, not talking about those things. Those are hush-hush. We don't talk about those. And we need to. So this is me talking about those things, trying to push you to make some good decisions for the health of your relationship with with Jesus Christ. And so I'd I'd like to close in prayer here. Um, I pray that this was helpful. That's where I've been. I'm back again, but I'm back with a much healthier relationship with technology. And I pray that through this video, you you can find the same thing. So, So let's pray. Father God, Lord, you are so good, so satisfying, Lord. All goodness is found in you and you alone, Lord. And so anything that strikes us as good is merely a shadow of your goodness and your love and your mercy and your grace and your wondrous, wondrous nature. Lord, let us not look anywhere else for supreme happiness. Let us not look to anything else to satisfy the soul that thirsts and needs you. God, thank you for not being distant, Lord, but for entering your creation through divine revelation and more importantly, Lord, through the incarnation of Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, God among us. Thank you for his death. Thank you for his resurrection, that we might be raised to newness of life in him. God, it is such a glorious reality. A glorious reality, Lord. And we pray that as we deal with the temptations of life that try to move our eyes away from you, Lord, that we would resist them. God, that we would put boundaries where we need to put boundaries, Lord, and that we would root out and get rid of completely anything that would hinder that relationship with you. Lord, help me to continue to examine my own life. Where are the weaknesses, Lord? And help those listening, Lord, to be encouraged to take action in their own lives. Hey, God, we recognize that all these things that we strive for, that we long for, we cannot do apart from your grace. And so we ask you for your grace, Lord. Fill us, strengthen us, convict us, and bring us into closer and deeper conformity to the image of Jesus Christ. We ask this in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in to this podcast today. I really appreciate it. If you wouldn't mind, please click the subscribe button, like the video, share the video. It helps bring more people to my channel and helps this ministry grow. Also, if you're watching and you want to find a way to support this ministry, you can click the link to my Patreon right in the description of this video. And there you'll find different tier levels where I give you exclusive content in exchange for your support. It means a lot to me, and I really appreciate appreciate you watching.